Today's lesson is about improving your line quality and finding the right line. Line is a way that artists try to represent things on paper. The line describes the boundary between something in the foreground and something in the background. The tools I use for my drawings are usually graphite, charcoal, and Conti crayon. And I prepare these tools by sharpening them using a utility knife or an X-Acto knife. I use a blade rather than a standard pencil sharpener because it gives the tool varying facets and planes that will naturally make my line thickness more varied depending on how I turn it while I draw. We use line to show that there's a boundary between foreground and background. And line drawings are often meant to be quick and less developed, so learning how to vary your line can better describe objects and figures in a scene in a shorter amount of time with limited tools. In more complex drawings, an artist might use color or texture differences to represent a scene or a subject. A first step to vary your line when drawing is to vary the weight. Line weight is the pressure you apply with your tool to the paper while you're drawing. With my first line, I used the same amount of pressure applied to the entire line. On my second line, I varied it by pressing harder than less to vary the weight of the line on the page. The next time, I'm changing the way I hold my pencil so that I grip it between my thumb and forefinger. With this position, the pressure applied to the paper will come more from my wrist and forearm and can give me the option of twisting the tool so I can take advantage of the facets that I made when I was sharpening. The line will change as I twist the tool and apply varying pressure. The line adapts more readily to curves and has a natural gesture, allowing me to represent my subject in a more lifelike way. The first figure I'm going to draw here, I will draw without varying the pressure of my line. I'm able to capture the figure's shapes and the pose, but using lines of equal thickness throughout, it looks mostly two-dimensional, and there's not much representation of parts of the body that are closer or farther away. I do the same, but apply lighter pressure, and while it looks more sketch-like and has a little bit more gesture and a feeling of movement, it still has less dimension. Here is a third figure where I use more line variation in pressure and twisting my tool more to capture more dimension in the figure. I'm trying to show that this figure has parts that come forward, parts that recede into the background. There are parts that are deeper than other parts. I'm trying to describe that by using a varying line. Remember my hand? A line is meant to show the difference between the subject and the background, so finding the right line to describe that boundary can be helpful in representing the subject well. When I sketch, I use a technique that starts with very light, ghostly lines that generally describe the edge of a subject. 
Then I make a decision and find the right line that is the best match to describe that boundary. I'll do it a few different times here. I usually leave the ghost lines because I feel that they help to show that one doesn't truly outline the subject, but thousands of little boundaries actually exist as the three-dimensional subject moves and light changes and kinetic energy and particles shift and change. That way the subject always has some life. Here's an example of me drawing a figure, starting with the ghost lines. I get the pose and the gesture of the figure, find the larger shapes, mark the proportions that I wanna capture, and then I find the right lines that I feel best describe the outer boundary of the shapes. the same line variation technique with charcoal and find the right line as I complete my figure sketch. to draw is the shared line between parts of a figure resting against other parts. Seated poses are great places to find and practice these lines. This line can also be found where an eyelid creases or a top lip rests against a bottom lip. Part of the body is pressed against another part, they share this boundary, and representing the pressure between the two places can bring life into the sketch. 
In this next drawing, I find this relationship in two places and I use a heavier line weight for the parts that are pressed more closely, tightly together. I can even come back in with some shading to better describe it. Thank you so much for watching today. For more drawing videos, time lapse, prop builds, and gallery work, check out the rest of our YouTube channel. Happy drawing! <laughs>